there are two social forms of fire ants. There are, there are what are called polygynes and monogynes. Polygyne literally means many queens. Monogyne means a single queen. Polygynes have colonies in which there are many queens that are laying eggs simultaneously, whereas monogynes are generally smaller colonies because there is a single queen that lays. There are two important ecological differences between monogynes and polygynes. One of them I've already mentioned, the polygynes occur at much higher densities. They're simply larger nests, more queens. The other one is that they disperse very differently. The monogynes will have mating flights in which the males and females will fly high up into the air, 100 meters or so, often higher than that. They'll mate and then the females will essentially rain down all over the place and start new colonies. In contrast, the polygynes uh, will disperse either on foot or in mating flights that are just a meter or two off the ground. And so they're what we call dispersal limited. They don't spread as rapidly as the monogynes. When we went into this study then, we predicted that the monogynes would be less influenced by our corridors, simply because in our case, they fly well over the canopy of the forests that we were studying. And the scale of corridors really doesn't make much difference to them because they're dispersing so high up over such great distances. But that, in contrast, corridors would make an effect on, on how well the polygynes dispersed. So what we found was that, indeed, that was the case. That in the areas where there are polygynes, that polygynes are much, much more abundant. They're already abundant, but they're much more abundant on average in patches that are connected by a corridor than in patches that are not connected by a corridor. And that strongly suggests that the facilitation of movement provided by the corridor allows for this increase in population size. Monogynes, on the other hand, were not affected by corridors. The presence of a corridor makes no difference to them at all. Taking this one step further, uh, monogynes, we found, were associated with a significant decrease in the species diversity of the native ants. So where the polygynes occurred, uh, native ant species diversity was about 23% lower in connected patches than in unconnected patches. So that facilitation of movement by the polygynes does appear to have a significant impact on the native species, whereas there was no impact of, of the monogynes on the species diversity of native ants. The important take home message here is that in general, corridors are an important and effective conservation tool. They make a big difference for species that are not able to disperse very well. It turns out that most invasive species, like fire ants, are good dispersers. Almost by definition, invasive species get around very well, and fire ants are no exception. And for the vast majority of fire ants, the monogynes, which tend to be more common, uh, the corridors don't make any difference at all. Where it gets interesting is that the polygynes are essentially the exception that proves the rule. They are an invasive form that is dispersal limited. They're not very good at dispersing. And so if you provide a corridor for them, that corridor do does benefit them and they are able to move around. You, you can't have it both ways. You, you can't have an ecological facilitation of just one type, uh, for just one type of organism without it having similar effects on other types of organisms. So for better or worse, corridors will facilitate the spread of some invasive species such as the polygynes. Wow.